Five Nights at Freddy's is known for a number of things, but more than anything, it's known for its animatronics. But how much would they cost in real life? Well, in this video, that's what we're going to find out. I'm going to be using real world sources to estimate how much each of the Five Nights at Freddy's animatronics are worth. In this video, I'm only going to cover games 1 to 3, so if you want to see a video on the other games, please let me know by leaving a comment and subscribing. But anyways, without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> Starting with the Final Fantasy Freddy's 1 crew, we actually have a very good frame of reference since the Final Fantasy Freddy's movie literally made the actual animatronics. Now, despite the fact that we know how much money it took to make the movie, I wasn't able to exactly find how much it cost to make each of the characters. However, we can make an educated guess. The Final Fantasy Freddy's movie reportedly cost between 20 to 25 million dollars to make. So obviously, it'll be less than half of that, since after the cost of the actors, the sets, the space, the equipment, and the staff, we would still have about 10 to 15 million dollars left. Now, realistically, the animatronics wouldn't cost 15 million dollars. For some examples, if we look at a company like Chuck E. Cheese, their animatronics cost about 45,000 to 50,000 dollars to make, and companies like Disney pay between 100,000 dollars and 1 million dollars to make theirs. So, based on these numbers, we know that the FNAF animatronics are most likely going to be between $50,000 and $1 million each. There's multiple factors that can affect how much an animatronic will actually cost, and I'll be using this throughout the entire video. Clearly, there's three main factors to consider. How detailed the animatronic is? Is it complicated or is it simple? How does it function? Does it require a control panel or battery? Are there any special requirements like facial recognition technology, for example? Wink, wink. Now, for the Final Fantasy 1 crew, in terms of detail, it's safe to say that these designs are on the lower spectrum. All the characters are basic, blocky designs and wouldn't be too complicated to make, with maybe the exception of Foxy, whose smaller, faster build might have contributed to why he never gets repaired. If I had to guess, the fact that he can run so fast falls into the special functions category. Obviously, the fact that they can walk around the building seemingly at will implies some type of special functionality. Although this does not exist in the real world, I'll make it fair and compare it to a real life function animatronic can have to compare prices. There are a number of different ways animatronics can be powered, and from the Final Fantasy 21 crew, we are going to assume that they all use hydraulics since they never seem to be needed to be charged, which also implies that they run off battery power of some kind. To know that all the Final Fantasy Freddy's characters have a voice box since they all scream at you when you die, not to mention Freddy's music box. So, with all that considered, Here's my final guess on the animatronics value. Bonnie and Chica are the cheapest, since they have simple designs with separate accessories. Bonnie would be slightly cheaper due to his more dark, simple design, possibly requiring less maintenance with such a dark colour. Chica's cupcake and Bonnie's guitar would probably be separate to their value since it does not appear they need to be attached to them at all. With everything considered, my estimate is that Bonnie would sit around $150,000 while Chica would be around $175,000. Foxy and Freddy are the more expensive, and Freddy is the less expensive of the two. With a functioning music box, an attached microphone prop, meaning a slightly more complicated design, a laugh system, although it could be supernatural, it has to be part of Freddy because look, his voice system is there, and these characters can't do completely impossible things, even if they're possessed. I would guess Freddy's price to be around $225,000 with all things considered. Foxy's ability to sing, and more importantly, run, makes his entire value skyrocket. I would guess that Foxy would be worth around $350,000 at the minimum, mainly due to his insane ability to run at will. It's no wonder they won't repair him, he's so expensive. Now, with all that considered, how much would it cost to maintain his animatronics? Well, it depends if they are hiring qualified engineers or just hiring random people. Which, let's be real, looking at their staffing policies, yeah, they're not professionals. With this, we can say that the only expense would really be parts, which I'll get into later. For maintenance, it would be around an extra $1,000 to $10,000 just to maintain it, but let's say each character is getting the minimum of $1,000 per year, since they obviously aren't being cleaned, with Foxy being completely ignored meaning an extra $3,000 per year is needed to maintain them in the state that they're in. I'm also going to count the Endo in the back as a separate character, meaning that at the bare minimum, we're going to be adding another $100,000 since we're assuming they have the same function as every other character. So in total, the Final Fantasy Freddy's 1 animatronics would cost about $1 million collectively to make, and that's not counting all the heads and spare parts, which would probably add another 500 k to the goal. But yeah, there we are. 
Let's see how the other games fare. Okay, the Vile of Freddy's 2 characters are super high tech and advanced, and this will get interesting. Now, quickly mentioning for the Wither animatronics, I'm just gonna say they would all cost the same as their Final Fantasy 1 versions, since they all act the same. Although, let's just take about $50,000 off each of them, due to the current set that they are in. Alright, so for the toys, we know a couple of their features. They can walk around, they can interact with kids, they can turn towards sound, and they have a security system tied to a facial recognition software. So, these animatronics are going to be pricey as f Although, despite that, there is one character that would be way cheaper than the rest, and that's Mangle. Because of their condition being so terrible, I would say that Mangle would be worth around $150,000, since it clearly is completely broken and mainly an endoskeleton. Now, for the main three toy animatronics, which are all simpler in design, and they all seem to be able to do the same thing. So, I would estimate that at the lower end of the spectrum, each character is worth at least $1 million, and at most about $3 million due to their complicated AI allowing them to access the government criminal database. But, just to make it fair, let's say each animatronic is worth about $1.5 million. Now the last two characters are Balloon Boy and the Puppet. Balloon Boy doesn't really do much to be honest, and I don't know if he interacts with the kids the same as the others, so I would say that Balloon Boy is going to be somehow worth about $100,000 because he technically isn't even an animatronic. Now, last but not least, we have the puppet, which gets super tricky since we don't even know if they're an animatronic or just a puppet. Although, looking at the wiki, they are apparently an animatronic, but obviously, like Balloon Boy, they lack an endoskeleton. So, for this reason, I'm gonna be putting them into the category of stage puppet with a bit of advanced AI. In my opinion, the puppet would be worth around $750,000 due to its security AI, but lacking the same abilities as the toys. So, in total, including the Withers, the toys, the extras including in the Endo, the Final Freddy's 2 cast would be worth a collective $6,450,000. So it's no wonder this place is going bankrupt. But, it's time to go back to humble beginnings with the Springlock suits. Now, Final Fantasy 3 only has one animatronic, Springtrap, and obviously, he's a piece of junk. So, instead of figuring out how much he is worth, since he is worthless, let's calculate how much the Fredbear and Spring Bonnie suits would have cost to make. Now, for starters, these guys are more in line with the animatronics of reality, being unable to leave the stage unless they are put into Springlock mode, which basically just pushes the endoskeleton parts back in order to let a human climb inside which basically just means it's a suit, like a mascot suit, like a, you know, the Mickey Mouse at Disney World. Anyways, this machinery is a little complicated and is known to fail, so it's not safely tested. With these factors considered, I would estimate that the Fredbear's Family Diner crew would be worth about $150,000 each, due to their basic functionality and overall versatile use with the Springlock suits, meaning collectively the two would cost about $300,000 in total, which isn't, you know, that bad. Well, that was quick, but there's one more question I have in mind. How much would it cost Fazbear Entertainment to deal with the Springlock failure? Now, obviously, due to their motto of not being responsible for anything, in-universe, they wouldn't have to pay Squat. But in the real world, it doesn't matter what fancy pants words you put into your contract, employers are legally required to deal with this shit. So, let's first start with the person affected. For starters, if the person is somehow able to survive this horrific injury, Fazbear Entertainment would be responsible for covering the hospital bills, which would probably cost around $30,000, which I got by comparing the closest real-world injury I could think of, a Great White Shark attack. Yes, I know, I'm Aussie. F deal with it. Now, if the person dies, this will get iffy. At worst, Fazbear Entertainment, or the people responsible, would go to jail for negligent manslaughter, which would get Henry and William a cozy 25 years in jail. They would also have to pay out the family of the deceased, assisting in paying for funerals, and etc. Which could cost another $500,000. And that's not even including the work the suit needs, getting the suit out of evidence, cleaning up blood, and all that sort of stuff. Overall, a Springlock failure would cost Fazbear Entertainment $2.5 million per incident. No wonder they stopped using them. And it's very surprising that these guys have a business at all, or that Henry and William didn't go to jail. Now, for yourself, if you ever experience a spin like failure while working, sue the company, or you're paying about $30,000. And now, one final calculation. 
If we consider every single character that we have calculated and add up how much money Fazbear Entertainment has spent on these characters across the three games, the total worth of all the animatronics from the first three games is about $8 million. So yeah, these guys are rich as f Anyways, that's the video. Again, if you want to see me calculate how much the rest of the cast cost, be sure to like and subscribe as well as leave a comment asking for more. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.